Hello all, my name's Joe and what we're going to be looking at is the Unreal Editor for Fortnite. If you find this useful, please do like, subscribe and hit that bell as it really helps me out and this is potentially a new course of videos I'll be doing looking at the UEFN. What I'm going to try and do is simplify the documentation so it's not so overwhelming for new people and also help people that prefer learning via video or doing as not everybody likes reading. I don't like reading but it's part of, unfortunately, the job so to speak um, and hopefully we'll be able to sort of progress through this together and learn how to create our first game uh, using UEFN um, without it being too overwhelming and too complicated that it puts people off. So let's get started and see where this takes us. So first of all we need to make sure we have the Epic Game Launcher downloaded. If we don't just go to Google, type in Epic Launcher Download download Epic Games and you'll be greeted with a similar uh, sort of screen as this. Take into mind that UEFN does not work with Mac currently so we'll just be focusing on Windows. So what we do is we uh, download. Um, you may need to set up an account here. Um, I've already got it downloaded so I can't remember off the top of my head but you will at some point need to set up an account. Once we've downloaded this we install the Epic Games launcher, sign in with our account and we should be greeted with a screen like this. Now um, we now need to download the uh, UEFN editor. Now, at the time of uh, creating this video, this was on the splash page here, the main the main page, so you could download it here. If not, we'll just type in the store search, um, Fortnite, hit enter, and you'll be greeted with this. Uh, so we want the Unreal editor for Fortnite. Click on that. And what this is going to do is take you to there and you'll get a thing that says, uh, I think it's add to cart. We add to cart, it's completely free, add to cart, you go through the transaction, it gets added to here and you'll get something like this. You will return to the screen and something like this. So then what we do is we click on library and you'll be greeted with these two. You'll then just uh, click install and, and what it'll do is it'll install the editor and also Fortnite if you don't have it. So once that's done, um, we are ready to go. So now that we've got Unreal Editor for Fortnite installed, we're going to launch it. Now, I've got mine running in the background just for the purposes of this video. What you'll get is something similar to the Fortnite video, uh, Fortnite game here, sorry, that click uh, says launch. So we click launch. That's going to bring up a sort of window that uh, has a percentage on it. Depending on how fast your computer is, depends on how fast it'll load. Once it's loaded, you'll get something similar to this. Um, this initial window here sometimes takes a while to pop up, so don't panic if it's feels like it's locked what we'll do is we'll uh, close this if you want to look into more complicated sort of in-depth documentation feel free to obviously if you need help go to the developing community and um, click done and what you'll get greeted with is the project browser now anybody that's used unreal will notice sort of similarities um, you've got different sort of island types here we'll look at some of these in the in the future we're just going to be sticking to a blank one just to avoid sort of uh, complexity um, what we're going to do is select a project location i'm just going to literally pause the video a second because uh, to hide any private information and i've selected my folder i'm going to give it a name so i'll do learning UEFN and we want to make sure the Unreal Revision Controller is on and what this allows to do um, it's from what I understand it's uh, similar to Perforce in the sense that what this will allow you to do is that if you make a, an accident you can revert back to a previous sort of version of your um, your project or whatever you've done so it's obviously incredibly handy um, creating teams and things like that we'll look at later this allows you to work together with a group of people um, so that you can all work on the project together, but that's something that you know we'll look at later. So once we've done that, we hit create. This is going to build our project. You're gonna see here, it's gonna add some very simple elements um, to our scene. And once it's done, you'll get something similar to this. So what I'm gonna try and do is, as we uh, move through things, I'm gonna try and sort of um, explain how to do things. So probably the best way, to, uh, best place to start is how to navigate uh, the main viewport. So the viewport is the uh, sort of part you're seeing here where it shows your levels and your characters and things like that. You've got the outliner over here, which is sort of where everything's organized and you can sort of see things, you can put folders, all sorts. You've got the details panel. So when we click on say this one, it then gives you more details, things like where in the world it is, um, the rotation scale, then this is sort of a lot more detailed. This all changes depending on what you select. So if we click that grid plane, you can see it's different here, materials, things like that. Again, this is something that we're gonna look at as we go along, but the most important one probably is how do we move through the viewport? Now, if we hold the left mouse button, that allows us to go backwards, forwards, and move around like this, and um, you hold it and drag. Um, if you hold the middle mouse button, that allows us to move like this. 
if you roll the middle mouse button, again, that allows you to zoom without the sort of freedom of being able to do this. Um, and if you hold the right mouse button, it allows you to look around the scene. So that is the sort of basics of movement here. Um, we will look at how you move things later um, as, as and when we need them. Currently, we don't you know, overwhelm anyone that's watching this. So when importing assets into uh, UEFN and in game development in general, you have a certain criteria to follow. Um, if you want to know more about this, please do check the documentation and look for the heading that says Criteria for Importing Assets in UEFN. Now, these are things like the amount of vertexes um, that you're allowed in the uh, in the editor, um, things like mesh scaling, the pivot points, rotation, materials, texture sizes, everything. These all have an effect on your game, and they all have limits within um, Fortnite um, to help, obviously, make sure things perform as they should be you know the last thing you want to do is create a whole level and it's it's sort of chugging um when it should be running really smoothly it also allows you to scale across multiple devices easy when when uh, sort of testing and and things like that um so it's very very important that you check that out and it gives a bit more of an understanding in like what what is a vertice what is you know pivot points things like that and um, i'm not going to go into all of that because that you know it's, it's a whole different sort of video um but that's very important it's, um, so sort of the things we should be looking at shouldn't really um cause issues with what we're we're trying to do because a lot of the assets are optimized but you want to make sure that if you're bringing in stuff say you've bought from another website or you've made yourself that they are optimized as they should be so what we want to look at is how to basically import our own assets so what we're going to do with this is we are going to what i've done is i've created my own sort of very simple asset uh, well, two actually, I've created a simple cube and a sort of cube that's got some cylinders poking out of it. It's just for the demonstration of uh, later things. So what I'm going to do here is in the uh, learning UEFN content, I'm going to right click and I'm um, going to create new folder. And I'm going to name this meshes. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to store anything that we make inside here um, just to make sure that the hierarchy is tidy. And what we're then going to do is go to my um, assets that I've got here. These are just randomly things that I've made in Blender, and I'm going to import them. So you can get your own ones here, um, or you can use Fab, which we'll be looking at in a minute. Um, but this is sort of giving you the basics of certain things we're going to be um, looking at. So when we're here, we want to make sure that we have combined meshes um, ticked. So this is if you're bringing in separate loads of separate meshes. Um, so say you have created. Um, a man with a hat um we don't want the hat and the man separately or we don't want you know the tree tree trunk and the palm leaves separate we want it all combined together we also want to make sure that we have um import lots on wherever that is where's that import mesh lots um search location local and create new materials um so when we do that we hit import and this is going to drag them into our content browser. So now in theory, um, you'll get may get an error that says no smoothing groups. It's not massively important um, for what we're showing here. Um, what that does is that basically makes polygons appear smoother. Um, it's sort of general practice when you're creating game assets that this is done, but we'll ignore that error for now. And hit control space bar and we've got our cube and our random mesh. So again, save to make sure that's all saved. And you can see here now when we double click on these it'll bring up a new window and we've got our own sort of mesh and we can move around exactly the same way as we can in the viewport using the left button right button and middle mouse button um, so we can see here so now what we're going to do is um, we can add a material to this so i'm going to show you how to create a very simple material um, we can go to back to our content here or we can move here and we can go material a new folder material and we're just going to go right click uh, material and name this m underscore uh, test one and actually let's name it cubes uh, jd so my initials cubes and we're going to double click on that and that's going to bring you to the material editor now this is can be very overwhelming and i'm just literally giving you a very quick look at this um, so what we can do is we, if we hold four number four on the keyboard and click that's going to give us this and we can plug this little white node into the base color and um, what we'll do is we won't look at any of these i'll just show you how to do that now if we double click on the color here 
we can change our color and you can see here it's, it's updating as we move it so we're going to go for a nice purple cube or pink cube there purple cube that will do so then hit save the little floppy disk up here you need to hit save because that won't apply any edits we do close this window so now what we can do is we can go hit control space bar go back to our meshes open up both of our meshes we'll do this one first in the details tab materials we can type in here cube uh, jd cube and we've got our cube there's purple so now what we can do is we can go and apply exactly the same same thing to this jd oh, and there we go so that is our cube with a simple material on um, anything that we generally import from fab things like that will have materials um, this is just a very quick thing to show that we've got a color on our material we can then um, add these to our scenes um, which we will be looking at basically allowing creating a sort of blueprint prop which will allow us to control it a lot more whether it's destructible whether it gives you a drop or anything like that but we'll look at that in the next part so now that we've got our assets imported, what we're going to look at is collisions on the meshes. Now collisions, basically what it says it is, is that we're going to set up uh, what the player can collide with and what you know other players can collide with and things like that. It's kind of very important um, because you can have huge performance hits with this if you're not careful. And we're just going to look at a very simple way. So if we click on the cube, we'll uh, double click, we'll be uh, greeted with this. If it happened to look like this, just pull the camera out by holding the left button and dragging back on the mouse. Um, if we go to show here and go to simple collision, what you'll see here is that it's suddenly highlighted in this little box. Now I'm not sure if YouTube's gonna show this, um, but we've got these little gray box and this is basically telling us where our collision is. Now for this, the box is absolutely fine, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at that other box I've got. So what we'll do here is we'll go open up this, show simple collision. So you can see here that this simple collision has basically encased everything here using as little um, sort of uh, collision boxes as possible to create this. Now we might want it that this is more precise. Perhaps the player, you know, this could be a skyscraper and the player can stand on here and this is just some sort of radio mast or something like that. So what we can do here is we can go collision, remove collision, and that's got rid of anything now. So if the player was to walk into this, it would hit it, uh, would just, sorry, just walk straight through it. So what we can do here is we can go to collision again, and we can go to add simplify box collision. Now you can see here, this has created a box collision that's just encompassed everything. So what we can do with this is if we hit R on the keyboard or spacebar, you can see here that it cycles through these. The one we want is the resizing here. So as you can see here, it's got, um, four different things the middle one um, will resize everything in one go and the sort of other three will resize in, in the directions that they're facing so they're similar to the uh, xyz down here there you can see here as we move um, that that follows this so what we're going to do is we're going to resize this cube uh, this collision cube um, to the size of this box here so now what we can do is um, if we want to move this we can hit spacebar again and this moves to our transform that allows us to drag it and um, we can do that and we'll say that that's close enough you know we're not we're not obviously going to spend hours on this so now we want the tubes as well so we can go to collision and we're just going to use a capsule so what we can do here is again cycle to our resize grab the middle one and we want to scale that down and move that up there and again move make sure we've got transform selected and what we can do also is we can hold alt and we can drag and that creates a duplicate. Um, so this will work in the Unreal Editor as well. This will allow us to duplicate things fast. Um, sometimes it doesn't work on certain things, but for the majority of it, it does. So you can see here, we've got a very, very simple sort of mesh here. Now the player will be able to walk on top of this collision without having to collide into this. Another thing we've got as well is that we can, rem again, remove all collision and we've got the convex, um, decomposition here this will automatically create one if you don't have that what you can do is go to collision and just go auto convex collision and this will load this up so what you can do here is we can play about with these counts and just put apply and you might say well that's exactly what i need excellent done um, be careful with this because obviously you can lose um use a, quite a bit of stuff when you start playing about with it and it's you know it's not necessarily needed but for the time being what we'll do is we'll just use that and make sure once you've done it you hit save um 
this is very important because obviously we don't want our player, say, walking through a building when it shouldn't be walking through a building. So, you know, do take your time with this um, to, to learn. Um, when you're creating your own model, you can actually add your own sort of collisions to it as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's one thing to look at. So um, also another thing to note here is that you notice there that I can't get this perfectly sort of, say, in line with this. You can at the top here, the top right, you've got the um, basically snapping tool. So you've got the uh, first one um, is the one for the transform. So you can see here it's um, how much we move here. So if I disable that, it now sort of moves more freely, allows us more precision, but it can get a bit messy. Same with the rotation here. That allows us to then sort of without sort of snapping. So that's essentially what that is snapping. You can change the degrees of snap here as well, um, but generally try and sort of stick to the more precise ones here that sort of, uh, yeah because what happens is you can end up getting in a real mess trying to align things. But I thought I'd just show that, and the same is applied with scale. It allows you to sometimes you can't quite get what you need, and you need to utilize that. So what we'll be looking in the next video is LODs. So what we're going to look at now is level of detail or LODs. Um, so what this essentially is, is it's very important to game development. Um, it allows you to sort of, the further a mesh is away from the camera, the less detail it will show. So for instance, if we're this close to this mesh, we'd want 100% of the detail or near enough um, to show off. So you imagine oh, it's a wonderful, great sculpture and we want to show off all of our, you know, modeling skills or whatever. But the further we get away from the camera, so say right back here, we don't want 100% of the detail on there because it's just using up sort of um, memory and graphics performance, um, CPU performance, things like that uh, unnecessarily because there's no point at all having them there. So I'm not going to go too much into this because it's something that we'll sort of visit later. Um, yes, we have things like Nanite and Nanite allows us to basically have essentially billions of polygons on screen and not have to worry about performance, but not all hardware supports Nanite currently. So we need LODs as a backup plan, essentially. So it's good to have both in practice. Um, Nanite something we'll probably view later, um, but how you edit LODs is that by default, when you load your mesh up, you will be given generally three LODs, depending on the mesh of what you've got it from. You know, if you buy some from the asset store, it could be five LODs, whatever. And when you click on one of these, so zero is the highest um, uh, sort of uh, LOD percent. So this is giving, so the percent of dry on yours essentially refer to it as the quality um, so if you're not under, if you don't understand things like polygons and things like that, this is essentially see it as the quality. Um, if we move that down, what will happen is that um, I'm not sure we'll see anything with this because it's, it's just a cube as it is. Um, but as we move this down, you'll see that the quality drops. Remember when you move it down to apply, press apply change, and then there's actually different tiers of this. So if we go to one, you can see here that the screen size changes. So that's um, up the top here. The screen size is essentially how close the camera player is to the item so if we pull back what would happen is that that would switch around there to another lod and then what happens is we move down and, and you can create more and more of these which can allow you to create sort of within reason the more you have the better transitions you can get without them suddenly going from say a cube to a cube with two cylinders on the top um, again we're going to be looking at this later if you want to learn more about this i would check out the documentation going uh, look for the sort of heading that says setting the level of detail this goes into a little bit more depth about it um, but i don't think this is really needed yet i thought i'd explain it just in case you're following along the documentation and you thought oh you've missed that out um, we will see this in use later um, this also in the documentation it tells you how to set up LODs for um, uh, sort of other hardware like everything from hard uh, high-end PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X down to a mobile. It shows you how to set them up there. So what we will be looking at next is basically conversing, converting assets into props. And um, this will allow us to decide sort of some of the factors of how um, you know, is, is a wall destructible? Is a wall indestructible? Will it drop stuff? Things like that. So we'll look at that in the next video. So as previously mentioned, we're going to be looking at how to convert our assets into props. And this allows us to control things um, a lot more efficiently. Do um, you know, decide things, simple things like can a wall be destroyed or, you know, does it drop gold or whatever? And we decide. So um, 
what we can do is we are going to hit control spacebar and we're going to navigate back to our content folder and we're going to right click in the content folder and we're going to go new folder and I'm going to type in blueprints and again this is just for tidiness this is sort of habits you get when using Unreal Engine um, these are sort of the generally the naming conventions um, double click on the blueprints folder right click and we're going to go to blueprint class and we're going to select building prop going to give this a name so BP um, destructible and underscore v1 and what we're going to do is we are then going to sorry double click on it and what you're going to get is something like this now what we're going to be looking at is, obviously we're not going to look at all of these features and um, we're just going to be looking at how to make something destructible and how to add a sort of particle um, effect to it to sort of show that it's being attacked essentially um, so what we're going to do is over in the static um, with sorry with BP destructible selected um, make sure it's the top in the hierarchy um, we want to navigate over to the right and look for mesh static mesh now what we can do to make this easier is we can either drop down the list here type in what we're looking for or just hold control spacebar again navigate to our meshes folder and I'm going to use this one as the destructible one so this is going to plonk our sort of random cube cylinder thing here and then what we're going to do is we're going to basically this allows us to create a mesh um, show, sorry create something that's visible so this could be a wall uh, a cat dog whatever we decide um, this basically gives us something to show in the world um, then what we're going to do is we're going to basically go to um, resource we're going to type in the sort of details panel up here um type and then we're going to select the building type so it's a prop um so we're yeah we're going to say it's a prop we're going to say it's made of wood and we are going to just check that is a prop, 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 prop. yeah i'll do for now uh, just type in resource and make sure the resource types wood and um, allow resource drop. So this is going to be basically when the, the thing's demolished, it's going to drop wood. We're also going to type in can be. So this is can be damaged. We need to make sure that that is ticked. Um, otherwise, when the um, when you try to hit it, it be, nothing will happen in the sense it won't uh, sort of play our animations or destroy or things like that. Um, then what we need to type in is, I believe it's death. And in the death particle uh, socket name we want to type in fx underscore death so this uh, we'll come to what the socket is in a minute but this is where basically our particle animation is going to play from and um, so we'll, what we've got to do then is hit compile very important and then save if you just hit save um, sometimes it doesn't compile and then you'll wonder why you're getting um, an error so press control space bar open up our mesh so we're back in this um, view here and over the right we want to look for socket manager now if that's not there just head to window look for socket manager and that'll bring it up then we're going to press the plus sign and we're going to type in fx death so what a socket is essentially is um, again we'll just save that it's a place on a character that um, or, or an object that allows you to attach things to so imagine a um, your player's hand you want to attach a sword to it you use a socket to attach the sword to your player and then that allows you to basically in code it allows you to say well when the player opens his hand and drops the sword you can then trigger the socket to say detach the sword um, this is just going to be used for a particle effect once we've um, added our thing we can actually move this about however everyone you know if we just wanted it to emit from the top but we're just going to leave it in the center here so again save um, and basically that is it for a destructible mesh and now we what we're going to do is we're going to now do go to our blueprints folder we're going to right click again blueprint class prop I'm going to go be very prop in this just Destructible, however you spell it, I'll do. Um, and what we're going to do is again, it's a similar thing. Make sure we're on the top of the hierarchy. Go to our static mesh, and I'm going to use the space bar again. 
drop that in. And then what we're going to be looking at is um, type. We are going to resource type. We want none. Um, building type we want as a prop. Um, then type in resource. We don't want it to drop anything. And we want can be. And we want to take can be damaged because obviously we don't want it damaged and that is our simple indestructible mesh setup now what we'll do is once we've um we will drag these into scene and towards the end of this overall video we'll then deploy it and we'll be able to see what we've done there in the um in the actual fortnite game so again we'll add these to our scene so control space blueprints drag those in drag those in and we've got our two objects in the world so that was literally to get those in it's literally you click on one and drag it into the scene and there we go and to move them it's again spacebar or wer and we want the one that's got this sort of arrows and that allows us to move it as we as we want and same with these um, so what we're going to be looking at next is how to import meshes from the fab marketplace um, which is going to allow us to have access to a lot more content that perhaps we're not creators and um, we can't make meshes ourselves so we want to use other people's meshes so we'll look at that in the next part now one of the issues um, people may face is that they don't know how to 3d model they don't know anybody that um, can 3d model and this is where epic's new fab launcher comes in now bear in mind this is still in testing so we may get errors when we're doing this video or you may get errors you know hopefully hopefully not generally their stuff's even, even their sort of testing stuff's incredibly well made. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Window and we're gonna look for Fab Alpha. So click on that. And this is gonna open up essentially their new store. Um, so I'm new to this relatively. Um, so we've got things like here, my purchases. So if you go here, you should see things that in this case are free. Um, so I've got I've not got anything purchased here yet apparently and um, so you might see your purchases in here but what we're just going to do is we're going to look at freebies at the moment now one thing you've got to take in uh, mind here is that you might get assets that have huge performance hits depending on how they're made um, so you always have to be very careful you know you might see oh this rock looks amazing and you would put it in and you find out that it's just a huge performance sink so you have to sort of use your best judgment when doing that. You also have to take into mind file size limitations that the actual overall project I uh, the size, I think you can submit to the sort of Fortnite um, sort of creator hub or whatever it is, is a limit of 656 megabytes. So we have to take into mind that we can't just pack this full of hundreds of gigabytes worth of assets. Um, so uh, we have to be very careful there. So, but anyway, what we're going to look at here is um, just sort of the basics, how to navigate it. Obviously, um, we're going to look for free. So base price, free. And um, what we've got here is we've got some like nice little stuff. Some of this is actually uh, mega scans, which I believe they said is fully optimized. Um, so let's have a look. What should we do? We'll add, uh, I'm going to add one of these. So click on it. Um, and we're going to add to content browser. We want to generally stay add as a reference asset rather than a modifile out asset. Um, the reference asset means that anytime they update um, their asset packs, it gets updated. And I believe it doesn't take as long for things to get sort of okayed by Unreal Engine when you submit stuff to them, uh, submit Fortnite games. So we've added that. You can see down in the bottom right corner, it's downloading. Um, depending on what you're, you're, you know, you've got there, um, you could take seconds like that did or it could take hours so we're going to add another boulder um do that and you can also sort of say packs um i'm not going to download one of these because obviously these take ages to to download but you can see here that we've got um loads of different packs here and obviously when you look into premium you'll get loads you know loads of different types here um so yeah um this is obviously i'd imagine it's going to be added to as it goes along um it looks like this could possibly, I don't I don't know, it could possibly be assets that are currently compatible with UEFN. Anyway, so what we've done is we'll close this window and we're gonna hit control space bar and we're going to go to all. So you can see here, we've now got a folder called referenced content. So what we can do here is we can add our stuff. Now, there seems to be a glitch in this at the moment that 
the actual image of it doesn't show. Um, so what you have to do is drag it into the scene. It'll then show in the scene. And then when we go back to it, it's now showing. You'll also notice with this that when you double click on it, it won't let you. It's basically saying that you can't edit it. You can't do any, you know, sort of edit the collisions or anything like that. Um, so bear that in mind. So we'll go to our boulder as well, same thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our boulder here and we're gonna increase the size. So with it, sorry, with it clicked, selected, go to scale and in the details panel and just type in whatever you want to name, you know, size you want. So what we can do is we can add that in and we've got a nice, nice big boulder here and um, for us to jump on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to uh, this, whatever this wall is, and do the same thing. And um, you can see it's, it's sort of crumbled over here. Uh, we can sort of move these around using the space bar and selecting the widgets. Um, so there we go, we've got created a little ramp there. Um, so again, we can do exactly the same thing that we did with these. We can add sort of them to a, is it destructible? Um, which let's quickly do that. So what we can do is go blueprints, right click. We're gonna name this BP Rock Distra. Double click. Then we're gonna to go to control, control space bar. We're gonna search for our boulder. We're gonna put our boulder in there and we're going to uh, basically then size it up so it's big. Um, don't wanna to go too too crazy with the sizing because obviously the, the more you scale it up, the more it resolution wise deteriorates, but for the purpose of this, it's fine. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to uh, resource and we want this as stone, allow a drop. And then we want, um, what was it, was it? Resource type attributes. We want to select, uh, look for stone. Where is it? I think it's P, Rock Stone. Try to, put, I don't quite know what these initialization subcategories are yet, um, but it tells you in the documentation to do that. I assume we'll be revisiting that later. Um, hit that. Oh, we need to make sure it can be, can be damaged. So now our rock can be damaged. Um, and what we'll do is we will, add that there so that's we're going to utilize that oh, I've got the wrong sized one there uh, that one we're going to utilize that there and that allows us to basically now damage that rock so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at basically deploying this so it's playable so now once we've done our basic introduction into some of this simpler aspects here we're going to want to obviously test what we've done we want to see what we're building in the world and sort of run around it and see what works, things like that. Now to do this, what we're going to do is press launch session at the top. And what this is going to do is bring up a new pop-up window and it's basically going to allow us to run around our level as a character from Fortnite, I believe it's a woman. And um, it's going to allow us to basically test our project. Now, what we can do with this is we can also make edits live. So say we didn't like the position of these rocks and um, we can move them about and we can push the changes and then this will push the changes to our level. Um, it allows us to sort of interactively work things out, what works, what doesn't, you know, is something too high, something too low, things like that. It also allows us to add to the scene as well. So we could add more rocks to the scene and then push the changes and play them straight away. Now, depending on how fast your computer is, depends on how fast this is gonna load. So for this, I'm just gonna pause the video just cause I don't want you to be watching this loading. So when it loads, what we've got is a character like this. Um, I'm not sure if this is the same character of everything, and it's very similar to the Fortnite character. What we can do is press F and you'll get a pickaxe. It allows us to move around like we usually do in games using WASD, spacebar, I assume, jump, and move with the mouse. Now, when we go up to here, this was one, was one of the ones we set as wood and destructible. So when we hit that, you can see here, um, it's playing a wood type sound, chucking out wood particles. Um, we can go here. And this one's indestructible, you can see here, it's not allowing us to hit it. And um, what we can do is go over to the rocks here. Again, this one will probably be, uh, yeah, there we go, non-destructible. And this one should spit out rock, you can see there. Now we can go back around here. Here's the assets we put in, we've got our little ramp. Um, so you can see here straight away, this, this allows us to play test what we've done. Now, say we wanted these two rocks closer. What we can do is we can actually tab out of unreal and just what i'll do is i'll just drag this down to here and we can go to our unreal engine and we can move these so what we can do here is we can move these and what will happen is that this will update and un, un, uh, in 
Fortnite here. So you can see here we've uh, basically moved our rock. Now if you want to basically add a duplicate of this rock, so if we hold Alt and drag off of it, we'll then basically go back to Fortnite and you can see we've got now three rocks. So, oh, hit the accidentally build mode there. Um, how do we get out of it? There. Um, now, this allows us to obviously create things on the fly as a team. Once you've got your team hooked up to it, um, it suddenly gives you this freedom of people can run around and test it whilst you're tweaking things to see, you know, imagine this, which I think they showed in a trailer, someone's doing a jump across something and it didn't quite make it because the vehicle wasn't fast enough or whatever. You can adjust it on the fly and they can keep testing it. Um, so basically this has given us a very simple rundown of how to set up a project, import some test assets, run around our sort of um, world, or mini world we're creating here. We've looked at the very simple, quickly looked at LODs. Um, we've looked at culling. Um, how to import our own assets, how to import assets from the fab store and some of the repercussions and also converting assets to props that allow us to do um, you know, certain things with it, destroy them, etc. Um, so if you found this helpful, please do like, subscribe. And um, what we will be looking at next is sort of going into more detailed aspects of certain areas and um, how to you know, sort of push towards making our own game um, and things like that. Um, so yeah, cheers. Thanks for following along and hopefully this has been a help.